this time, though. I've got notes. All right. Yeah. <laughs> I wrote down one thing. Jeremiah 11.11. Right. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Jamie, pull that shirt up. What does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> That's the secret to the entire movie. You just have to know what that means. Did you figure that out? Uh, yeah. What does that mean? The <clears throat> I looked it up real quick, and then I quickly forgot it, but they uh, talk about it in one of these says therefore this is what the lord says i will bring on them a disaster they cannot escape although they cry out to me i will not listen to them jeremiah 11 11 huh. who is this jeremiah guy uh, you, you know, the guy that like, swallowed by a whale no that was jonah, jonah. This is, yeah, yeah this is jeremiah i believe he was a prophet um <laughs> you know i probably should know more than that <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah the ending was wild i thought i would say yeah the moment that other people were being attacked i was like this is getting interesting yeah i thought it was gonna be like one of those uh home invasion kind of uh horror movies where like a freddy krueger but it, nobody knows what's going on and after it's ended nobody will ever know that this ever happened right um but that this was happening to a lot of other people it's like this is like something they can't hide <laughs> Right. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Or, or, uh, <laughs> or say, like, Jason was there. Everyone would be like, yes, we know. He chased after every single person in the United States. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. The, um, yeah, it was definitely almost sci fi in a way. Mm -hmm. You know, it crossed into a different genre because right. th this is happening to everybody. It's on TV. Right. Um, I would say I wasn't surprised by the ending. Uh, I like that they confirmed it. I had my suspicion because it always kept leading up to the moment where like she's running into her double and then like, I, what would the double do? You know, that would be treacherous or anything like that. You swap places. Right. And now in the end, um, when she's winking at the kid, is she doing that thinking maybe to uh, let him know everything's okay? Right. Is that a smile? Like I'm going to kill my family or is that a smile mm -hmm. of like, uh, hey, kid, everything's going to be fine. I'm your mom. Because the kid's kind of looking at her suspiciously, you know. Right. What do you think? The, <clears throat> you know, it leaves the the door open for right. the sequel. Right. Uh, and and she's now aware that she's got this out, maybe, right? Mm -hmm. The other guys are locking hands and across America or whatever. It's not clear what's going to happen, but you can still see there's helicopters in the air filming this at the end, mm -hmm. showing all these crazies locking hands. But um, it, it, uh, presumably if they take power or something and uh, they're running the show, right. then you could say that, okay, then she can join up with them if she wants. If the going gets tough, she right. just changes into a red jumpsuit. and uh, Which, by the way, I mean, that's going to be... October Halloween 2019. Oh, that, yeah. That's going to be the go-to <laughs> costume, I think. Group group uh, costume. You get the glove. You get yourself some scissors. Scissors. You know, maybe the mask. Uh, yeah. Of lighter. Uh, I think you're right about that because they're doing a, a new segment scene of like someone. Hey, they're they're forming up a line. It's kind of weird. And then I think one guy near the line uh, breaks off or just runs towards, walks towards a person, kills them. Whereas this person. Shadow Girl. All right, so this original girl who's in charge of the tether, and I'll call this one Shadow Girl, who escaped. So yeah. Shadow Girl uh, doesn't get attacked by any of the other people. They grab her, but, you know, there's a moment where, like, she wants to kill her, but, you know, she's a tethered or a shadow person, so maybe she, she doesn't, you know? Yeah. Uh, I think they have, I think she's kind of like uh, zombie proof in a way, and that's why she knows that she can go down there and fight off because... The, the shadow people because she knows that they're shadow people she's prepared for that i guess psychologically she knows what she's being confronted with um whereas if it's for anyone else i guess they would be sworn by the people holding the lincoln chain or something right right it was it was a bit strange i thought there was a moment there when she so uh lupita nyongo uh, she kills her do or the original mm -hmm. so she she the main character she's a copy of right the the girl the original girl yeah. and yet when she kills her 
she kills the original. Right. And you would think, I would have thought at that moment that would have been an interesting time to be like, there's only one soul, so she then takes on... You would, I would have thought that would have been an interesting time for them to choose to have her take on the personality of the old one, but just now in her body. There was moments where she was kind of animalistic, right? Especially in the killing. There were moments where like, she was kind of grunting, especially when she killed um, the original person, the shadow person. And she's kind of very primal in that. And that seems to be the way the other shadow people that are tethered act. Um, when she did that, that confirmed for me that She's a shadow person. Right. Right. Um, I would say that it was a good movie. Uh, I thought yeah. <laughs> Maddie was like, oh, I'm confused. <laughs> I don't know what to think. <laughs> yeah. The uh, Well, so I originally mentioned this movie because I saw a random article about it. Uh, and it, it was on Breitbart. And it was titled, uh, Us Review Intense Warning About the Horrors of Socialism. And, of course, Breitbart would... Uh, it, you know, I'm sure they would try to interpret any movie if it's slightly favorable to uh, free market capitalism. How do they associate it with uh, socialism? Basically, these uh, tethered people are all wearing red, mm-hmm. uh, so they're all you know communists. Um, they are trapped in this underworld, but they are you know, in a sense, they don't have all of the things that their counterpart in the real world has, mm-hmm. and so they leave behind uh this this tortured existence and they go in they go out into the real, into the real world and they take what uh is due to them from ah, their, their ah. real people right yeah and um yet you can see that they don't really know what to do with it like right. the the in the one example uh Elizabeth Moss yeah, I believe that's her name. She puts on uh lipstick right and it's kind of awkward and weird and uh and the other guy puts on the bathrobe from and one uh, guy wearing glasses. Oh, glasses! What are these? Right. Yeah. Right. So they don't know quite what to do with it, and uh, it's because they've spent their existence in this this crazy, you know, that asylum. Is a good place. analogy. Uh, you have maybe the rabbits, which is the only kinds of meat they can eat, and you have these uh, people who escape Soviet Russia or are coming here visiting. They go to the grocery store and they see like a whole variety different kinds of foods um shocking because for them it's like all right we're only going to have fish on tuesdays uh, right. and on wednesdays uh, and in this world is rabbits for monday through mondays uh right. morning lunch and dinner yeah they're simulating <laughs> in a sense they're just simulating a real existence but they're not participating in in real life they're only right. getting a shell so these it's like um you know it's a, definitely an analogy for uh, this this article points out, it says, the Wilsons are terrorized by their own doppelgangers, crude, malevolent, angry, bitter doubles who are, without question, peel stand-ins for socialist. He even He's even a bit on the nose by dressing them all in red. So uh, <laughs> uh, There was a moment where the young girl, the daughter, was talking about how there's fluoride in the water um, leading to mind-controlling people, and the parents are just kind of ignoring this sort of stuff. It's like, all right, if you don't care about... Uh, the end of the world, and um, I guess for me, it's, I'm thinking about like there's always an end of the world moment for like ages. Every age has an end of the world moment. Every decade is Cold War. You know, bombs are going to explode. Uh, you have Lutheranism. A lot of people are expecting for the apocalypse in Europe and that the second coming of Christ is coming all the time. So the world is always going to end pretty much for a lot of people for every age. But uh, with this one, I guess you can kind of also tie that there is a mention about uh, puppets and puppeteers, and maybe the mind control could be uh, an analogy to people today being mind controlled, or maybe bring into question if you are the puppeteer of your own life, or are you the puppet of other people controlling you, uh, maybe through media, or maybe through I don't know about fluoride, but yeah, uh, limiting the narrative, right? Yeah, yes, so I think, uh you know, I guess there's there's has to be a reason why that was kind of put in there too. I don't know about this whole experiment where she was talking to revealing in the end that maybe this was like a government experiment, right? And if it was a government experiment in these tunnels that they created and you know that they abandoned them, I guess, there in that tunnel. Maybe they thought that they could use the tether people to control the people above ground. Uh but I don't know if that makes sense because the little girl 
who switched places wouldn't know that theory, right? Because she's like, what, six years old or something like that. How would she sure. know about the government theory that this is what happened? That's an interesting uh, point. Yeah. I mean, there's... Well, I guess what happened was she switches <coughs> places with her shadow, right? Mm -hmm. So she goes down there and she, notice she's the only one who can talk. So she learned to talk at a young age. And so she goes down there and she's like operating on a different level than everybody else, right? Because she's able to... Um, she's down there. I guess she's getting controlled by her double, or it's they never quite make know, that clear. He, yeah, I don't think she she's controlled at all. And I, and the it's not perfect. <clears throat> like the copying is perfect when they want it to be. Mm -hmm. Like when the boy backs up and he right. and he walks his his shadow into the fire. But there's other times where they don't just perfectly match each other's movements. Right. Maybe the originals can control the shadow people. And so because the shadow mother was in here, that's why the original can kind of dodge all her attacks because she knows what she's going to do. Right. Right. And so she's she's in control of the shadow person. Uh, and that's why she has like more of a foresight, I would say. Yeah. Um, I would say trying yeah. to figure out like why they have a... Uh, these bunkers set up and I'll kind of want to put it away from government kind of conspiracy. I want to say, I think it's mystical. I think sure. it's uh, magic. I think it's has to do maybe with another, uh, birds, uh, theory of, uh, of Armageddon. That's always been kind of lurking underneath the earth and beneath these, you know, archaic pages and stuff like that. I think sure. it's, uh, like Cthulhu level of, uh, <laughs> of, uh, monstrosity or, or theme. I don't think it has to do with, government theories because if they abandoned these tunnels and abandoned these people you have the twins that were murdered right their friends yeah that would have to mean that they're continuing to clone these people to control them above world right right, yeah. right. so presumably what a, and i guess you know if you try to dig too deep into any of these these types of movies of like oh well you know freddy krueger doesn't exist because uh the dream world blah blah blah, blah you right know? but in, the, in this case i guess what they're doing is they're mirroring all of the actions of the, the above so they people. could so like season a like they live in a cross country yeah and people underground are going on in the tunnels to meet each other and right. to have these babies and they're not doing it. So right below us, <clears throat> there's a John and a Cal pretending to right. have this conversation, <laughs> and they're just yeah, they're just mirroring, or you know, and they're and they're dating the you know the Maddie and, and Annie and you know yeah. and all that. So yeah, and and yet they're uh, they're not getting to choose all right. any of it. Now, important question: Do you think you can take on your doppelganger? Oh yeah. Yeah. I am eating much better than uh, <laughs> he is. I, that was one whole, you know, <laughs> the, the the guy, uh, Alcohol, the dad. Oh, he makes me stronger. <laughs> yeah. Well, and the dad in the movie is is huge. He's like a power lifter or something. Mm -hmm. And his doppelganger is just as big. And it's right. like, uh, he's just been eating rabbit. In, uh, is he really? What is he weightlifting? Yeah, that's a good point. Right. right? Other people. <laughs> All right. I'm he on would a just roller be coaster. Overweight. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And mm. and when he's yeah when he's doing weightlifting he's just m pushing up nothing right yeah. yeah so so you got to suspend belief for a little bit or the original girl when she becomes in charge of all of this the shadow people she puts them on a regimen to like all of a sudden they're all kind of they were walking aimlessly. But, and then at the next moment, you know, she's like, all right, here are your barracks. Uh, here are your beds. Yeah. Uh, we're going to have some discipline. Uh, I have a plan. And this plan is going to be uh, world domination and a freaking, you know, hand by hand monkey chain across uh, the entire country. Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. All right. Maybe there's that. The, you know, I guess the, there's, there's a side of us that is like, <clears throat> like them, you know, and then there's a side of us that presumably is like the, the real people. So there's a sh there's a side that's like shadow people, and presumably a side like like uh, the real people, and that maybe the you know Jordan Peele's trying to to say something about that because you you got to believe he's not saying that socialism is bad, right? He doesn't know <laughs> the arguments. Maybe that uh, we have a capacity for evil, which I think is true. I think everybody has a capacity uh, to do harm. People have a comp like, uh, and that's kind of what. You want, I think, uh, every person has, should have the capacity to do violence. 
Right. Um, that's kind of important to defend yourself instead of just to freeze. I think uh, having the capacity to do violence, but I find that Western culture has helped us civilize us in a way that we're not always uh, walking around on four legs and being kind of barbaric. Uh, and that's so much like, you know, we hold classes, you know, very fragile things. And knowing our capacity for violence, we could easily crush it or destroy it. But we create so many things that are very fragile. And I think maybe this kind of shows maybe a way of uh, the potential for that sort of stuff or, or shadows. Right. Maybe that's what the scissors are, kind of like a Peter Pan thing where you have to sew your shadow together. And I think if you want to cut it off, you're going to have to cut your shadow off. Right. And yeah. for them, yeah, I guess that's kind of obvious. Scissors, tether, cutting your shadow off. That, that is an interesting point, yeah. I mean, also I thought that the, the shadows come prepared to fight. Right. <laughs> Whereas the, the people are saying, oh, no, no, please leave. And dad is telling them to leave. And then he gets his baseball bat. And he loses that. And he hurts his leg. And all this stuff happens. Meanwhile, the, the shadows are on a mission. And they they came ready. And uh, you could argue that uh, these folks would have been a lot better off with a, a shotgun in the house, baby. With or a, a gun. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they could have dispatched them pretty quickly. Apparently, yeah, these people are not, uh, they're supernatural, but they're not invulnerable. You can kill them. That being said, they see shows like, all right, I'm getting the gun, <laughs> not the baseball bat. Uh, especially if you're going to go to another foreign city and you don't know, uh, as they find out, like the police respond time was like 14 minutes away and a lot can happen in 14 minutes. Uh, in New Zealand, that attack happened in six minutes, right? So when... You know, as they say, when you need an emergency, cops are, you know, a chalk outline away from, you know, meeting that. Right. Um, I like the references to the Fuck the Police songs, <laughs> and it, and maybe that's another way. I don't know. Maybe, maybe he's saying that to arm yourself. Maybe he's saying the police will never be there. Uh, they're always there after the fact. And maybe that's uh, another underlying message uh, yeah. to this. Um I think he did a good job keeping it as a horror thing. I wouldn't say, I think all the stuff they were distracting from, like the socialism, I was saying maybe the major point, if there is an underlying message, would be guns. <laughs> Cops are. And, and be ready, you know, be like, don't mince words when major <clears throat> problem is facing you right. and you're, you want to deny that it is a problem. I did like the father's attitude. He's got a really laid back, uh, like, <laughs> honey, yeah, there are some people in our driveway. <laughs> kind of awkward or kind of weird. I mean, power just went off. Maybe they're there seeing. But you have to think that you live in a world because it's present time. You've seen movies. I've seen movies. And I always say sometimes, like, I've seen this movie and <laughs> preparing myself for in a situation like that. Right. I don't want to be... Uh, you know, Jason's first family kill, uh, Voorhees' kill in a movie. And, you know, these kind of scenarios that kind of play out, I think movies kind of help you prepare for that sort of stuff. I want to know why there is um, several references to Black Flag in the movie. You had the guy that was yeah. telling them to, uh, giving them a prizes, and he was wearing a Black Flag t-shirt. You had uh, the twin girls, one of them was wearing a Black Flag t-shirt. And I was kind of waiting for someone else to wear one again. But Yeah, like the where? maybe a pirate. You know, reference like we're raising the black flag. Oh no! Oh, <laughs> over the uh, uh, you know, all, I mean, obviously it's a band. But yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> maybe be punk about it because the the mother, uh, I'll bet she was a shadow person, was very punk about do it yourself kind of protection and kind of going in there headstrong. Yeah, and I think she did like very much a Ripley heroic heron strong lead because of the circumstances. And to be strong and to be violent and to be uh, have that tenacity and will to keep going, not uh, to up a man or anything like that, you know, because her children are on the line and she's like acting like a lioness to defend them and to uh, ward off uh, these attackers. And I thought that was that was fierce. I liked that a lot. The uh, the white family. So Elizabeth Moss yeah. and, and her two daughters and the husband. They are the typical materialistic uh, <laughs> American family, right? They're they're just they're sort of like a punchline. Yeah, and they're they're <laughs> drunk all the time, and so they're not prepared at right. all. <laughs> yeah, I would say always be prepared, but you can look like 
the crime statistics since the 70s have dropped down uh, a whole lot. You know, so like her, her fear, of like my kid might be kidnapped or something like that. Like this stuff doesn't really happen as often anymore. Um, there was a lot of violence that happened maybe 40 years ago. But today that's dropped down so much. Like you don't have to be so concerned about, you know, I can't let my kid, you know, go outside and, you know, roller skate or play on the on the swing next door in my backyard if, you know, there's nobody watching them. Sure. Um, so I think her or fear of her kid being kidnapped kind of plays on to like uh, the media sort of stuff and creating more helicopter parenting and creates more of the problems we have today. Um, but it would, I guess it is cool, at least here, to feel that you can just chillax. It's like, honey, there's nobody there. You know, um, I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying my couch right now. Yeah. <laughs> right. Maybe in the 70s, uh, you could enjoy that. I mean, or yeah, 70s are an interesting place because you have like the kickoff of the war on drugs, but the crime rate soaring started happening around the late sixties. And you can also say, there's also arguments saying that this is also a result of the immigration act and shifting it to third world immigrants coming in. And every time that happens, there's always going to be problems and kind of um, problems with assimilation. Right. And, and violence. Does Cultural turmoil. Yeah. Yeah. America stopped being uh, so united on one front, you know, with the world war two, you know, everybody was everybody was in agreement, and it was this uniting sort of effort right. across the country versus, uh, and you know, music changed, and people weren't listening to the same, you know, types of movies, and so yeah, sure. I mean, I like the comment when uh, the shadow woman was like, "Well, who are you?" And I said, "Well, we're Americans." <laughs> so you can right. say, All "Right, uh, maybe you can say." A weird connection to immigration, trying to see what it's like to be uh, appreciation of Western culture. Uh, <laughs> people who have no idea about, you know, you pick up after yourself, you pick up the trash, uh, you have responsibilities, you take care of your kids, you, you teach them not to curse, right? Uh, you go on family plannings, you do a lot of this sort of stuff. You don't have this like uh, woman, you know, don't talk to me, you know, second in place. You know, there's you, you, people kind of view each other. Uh, as a nuclear family, as this kind of represents, uh, you have, I would say, maybe people coming in. And just because sometimes just because you're in a, a geographic area, like these people who are uh, underground in these subways, just because you're above ground doesn't automatically transform you into like a libertarian. Doesn't right. automatically transform you <laughs> into a Western culture, cultured uh, appreciation of uh, nature, of uh, the environment, of preservation. Uh, having a low type preference, uh, civilized things. Right, right. So I thought that was uh, maybe unintended, but kind of reminds me that it takes time to assimilate, you can say, right? Right. Uh, so. Yeah, people have a natural ability to go into a place <clears throat> or a town or something and immediately perk up and start to notice things are different here and mm -hmm. they're not quite the same as where we live. And uh, so I could absolutely imagine, you know, this... Yeah, being a statement about not being able to just become what someone else is, you know, what they've what they've worked for and what they've created for themselves. All right. It, it takes a lot of work and time, and it's not a, it's not a. We're not a propositional nation, right? You, know, you could say <laughs> that's a problem in Europe, where they just allow anyone to come in, and they're not interested in assimilating. They're not interested in appreciating the culture. They're interested in more importing. The culture that they're running away from and now you have uh yeah a chaotic cologne a chaotic uh germany and places in england for example and i think maybe uh unintentional that's kind of what would happen right <laughs> like you're saying socialism coming from this other places yeah take what you want try to experiment try to take but they don't have like the underpinnings of like why we do these sort of stuff why we have these kind of a uh, way of life a uh, rule of law and that these things have been like forged like through decades going back common law going back for like hundreds of years right trying to create a good law for for people <laughs> yeah. right? a few years ago bernie sanders uh he, he referred to oh, unrestricted immigration as a Koch brothers proposal because somebody um i forget what his name is he's from vox mm -hmm. the, the website but uh he was saying all oh, the Republicans, you know, they are, you know, they want to restrict immigration, but you know, we're, we're for the left. We're for uh, totally unrestricted. Right. And he says, no, 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 that's a Koch brothers proposal and <laughs> because he sees that as bad for American workers. Right. Right. And oh, you know, we're going to have to compete and yada, yada. But, uh, so it, it, even sometimes when you catch people like that at unawares, they might, uh, they might open up 
about that and say, oh, it's, you know, it's not good. Mm-hmm. So it, it's, uh, we're in a, we're in a time where you're not, uh, you're not allowed to say anything. You're not allowed to say maybe it's, it'd be better. We'd be better off if uh, there was, there, you know, so, somewhat less. No immigration. <laughs> immigration. I advocate no immigration. <laughs> yeah. Even from Europe. So let's just, yeah. we got a lot of problems here. We didn't need to add on to it. <laughs> I don't want legal or illegal immigration. Just uh, put a hiatus on that for a minute for yeah. you know a couple of decades, two decades or something, uh, and just focus on the problems that we have here mm-hmm. right now instead of adding on to it and adding more cost to it. And maybe in a way uh, you'll find, uh, I mean, a lot of the immigration that comes from, like even from Bolivia, a lot of places come here are mostly interested in just uh, – them, when they make the money, going back and retiring back in Bolivia, right? <laughs> They're not interested in assimilating here. Then most of them are not really interested in most. Sometimes even learning the language or trying to complete great good English. Most of the money that they make goes back uh, down to South America, right? So it's mostly right. just coming in here to uh, to take as much as you can and send back instead of to like to add to the culture here or add to uh, what what makes uh, America great for that, right? That's why everybody wants to come here, right? Um, right, yeah. I think uh, you look like uh, there's like polls in India. If uh, if they could, seventy percent of all the people in India will come here to the U.S. Sure, right? and it, it's there's a good argument to be made that it's unfortunate that there's so many people in other places that can't just walk across uh, this imaginary line in, right. in the Southwest and suddenly, you know, get join the United States. Uh, there's a lot of poor, very poor people in Africa who would right. be much better off if they could come here as opposed. So it seems arbitrary that so many uh, folks from Honduras and, and uh, you know, the Central America can, can just walk in. Right. It's just, I would say, it's, it takes time. I mean, I was hearing something on, um, I forget where I heard it from, but the whole, we're a nation of immigrants sort of thing, but that's not necessarily exactly true. It's a nation of settlers coming in and establishing and creating America and then later on, you have uh, created by the Brits and the Welsh, and then you have uh, or the Dutch, and then you have other groups coming in, but they're always given a hard time, right? You're always uh, yeah. giving the Irish a hard time coming in, especially you see sure. like Gang of New York, but Leonardo DiCaprio giving them a hard time just to make sure that they assimilate and that they're coming here. Paddy wagons, right? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and make sure that the reason that you're coming here is not to bring. The tragedy and stuff like that that you're that that is the cause of you bringing here. You know, you leave all the the crap from that culture behind, bring some of the good stuff, but you're here to embrace uh, Western tradition. You're here to embrace like equality under law, sort of stuff, right? right. Um, you can say like even the interesting because I didn't find this out until like maybe two weeks ago. Like there is no country out there, and the, uh, most of them don't even have a Second Amendment, right? Uh, right to have a gun, all right? Uh, all of them have, like well, you know, if you don't like it so much, uh, you know, put you on an airplane uh, to go to all those other countries, and those like they're pretty much all of them, right? Right. It's people from California moving to Texas and saying, "Oh no, we want to bring all the ideology that made our state bad, right, with us, right, instead of adopting the way that things are done in Texas, right." <laughs> <laughs> so when you think about this concept, I think it makes me think I want more. Uh, Lichtenstein's right. thousand Lichtensteins, thousand Lichtensteins yeah. as uh, Hoppe said. Right. <laughs> I, this movie is wild. I love the way how it just kind of branched off again. Uh, regular horror series films are like is always Jason Horace coming after a family, but apparently everyone's facing a Jason Horace <laughs> right. on their own, uh, and it makes it worldwide. So you can't ignore it or pretend it didn't happen, like Freddy Krueger or a thing like it's kind of crazy. I was hoping yeah. that maybe that when they were in that uh, white family's home. And like they kill the doubles or whatnot, like the cops don't arrive, and they're like, "Great, uh, be a weird uh, get out movie." Uh, almost nearly the ending of that, where uh, the cops shows up, it looks like he just killed a woman, and so like the person would be at fault and, and arrested for it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it brings me an interesting topic for the director because he recently came out and said, "Well, I will never have, <laughs> I will never have a white lead in my movies." Uh, I think that's cool. Yeah, do you? Do you? Yeah, right. Sure. Yeah, uh, I think some movies have. Again, we talked about it recently. Some characters that are created should be, if they're created to be like Asian, make sure that they're Asian, right? Uh, there's yeah. a reason why they have the underpinning or the history for the creation of that character. I liked that this was a black family, but it didn't matter 
whatsoever to the plot that they were black. Because yeah. yeah. <laughs> all too often it's like, well, you know, in this this uh, I can identify with you, shadow person, because we've been discriminated <laughs> against too. You know, it would just be like, oh, okay, that would have been. I mean, I'm so glad they didn't try to do something. Yeah, like that. no, I, I really like the dad. I really like the family. Yeah. I like the the kid is very bouncy, and most kids are kind of like that too. Um, I liked uh, his humor. It's funny humor, especially on the bed, like setting it up. Like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was definitely uh, heart, was good, heartwarming, and that was yeah, cute. You know, it was family. a wholesome family. Yeah. And I guess, of course, her PTSD and not wanting to go back to the beach is like perhaps not wanting all this uh, to unfold since she's a shadow person. And she's created created a love and a connection for this family. That's why she doesn't want to go back there. Uh, just in case she doesn't know what could happen, but feels like it might be a trap, feels like it might be a trick, like her, the original person might trick her to switch places. Right. 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 And she's, fall- and that's a sign of assimilation, her, right? So her coming in here, um, not bringing her, you know, mindless walking around phase, yeah. and actually loving Western tradition, loving what this world has to bring, that she fights tooth and nail to protect that and the children she's created and yeah. influenced and brought up about in this environment. Yeah. That's an interesting point. Yeah. Right. She, she buys into the system instead of, yeah. Continuing to apply the, right. Yeah. <laughs> the monotony. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a great argument for assimilation, appreciation, um, a champion of, uh, those traditions. Right. It is refreshing. You know, it seems like Americans and Europeans and that when they go to other countries, they like to throw on the lay if in, they're in Hawaii yeah. or they like <laughs> to put on, you know, whatever and try on some of the local uh, food and, and everything. And uh, that, that seems to be like a impulse that is very strong. Right. Whereas sometimes when when people come here, it's no, 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 we like, we like our thing, you know, Right. <laughs> and, and you should try our thing. Right. Like, well, uh, let's, let's a little back and forth. It'd be nice. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Overall, I thought it was a great movie. Um, yeah. It's refreshing to see an original plot. Uh, refreshing to see like the, what, what they're wearing or what would we consider the villains or like the iconic, um, like Freddy Krueger has the claws and these people have like, I guess, driver gloves or, and scissors or something yeah. in the red suit. Uh, but it all kind of blended really well. Yeah. Yeah. For so sure. for me, I give it a 10 out of 10. Oh, wow. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Sheesh. <laughs> I always feel bad. I mean, I can't I can't rate anything perfect. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it was definitely for the type of movie that it is. Uh, you know, I, I would think 8 out of 10. 8 out of 10, yeah. Yeah. And ranked high. Hopefully he doesn't become the next uh, M. Night Shyamalan. Oh, no. <laughs> the next one will be a flop <laughs> yeah. going back and forth. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> so with that, uh, those listening, uh, share with us your theories. Uh, what do you think uh, all this stuff meant? Uh, government operation on the ground. Uh, these rabbits. I mean, can you really feed rabbits rabbits for them to live on for decades? I hope not. I hope not. I don't right. want to eat those rabbits. <laughs> I know they reproduce so much. Are they feeding them the youngins, right? Yeah. Yeah. Weird. Yeah. Uh, so with that, stay liberated. Get off my property. <laughs>